special offer. Yes. I'm sorry. He's coming up one, two, three, three steps and four steps and go forward. Your visit to St. Louis and to our metropolitan community is moving swiftly toward its end here in this Cathedral Basilica. Here are assembled representatives 
of our local church, asking to be confirmed in their faith. Bishops, priests, deacons, seminarians, religious and laity, including people who have worked so hard to prepare your visit. The American Cardinals and the bishops of the province share our joy. We are grateful that national, state, and local civic authorities are with us in rendering honor to your holiness. This cathedral basilica speaks about the history of the faith in our region. It bears witness to those who have planted the church on the banks of the Mississippi. This mother church of St. Louis is the center of our worship and a great sign of God's presence in our community. With special satisfaction, therefore, we welcome you here to lead us in the praise of God. This hour of your visit is special also for many people outside the Catholic community. With willingness and graciousness, our brothers and sisters of the ecumenical and interreligious community have accepted the invitation to come together this evening with your holiness. At the end of evening prayer, representatives wish to present to you an expression of common efforts in united service to our community. We are blessed by this spirit of collaboration and are pleased that your holiness should meet our friends. Present also are other friends in the metropolitan area, many of whom are zealous servants of the well-being of the city of St. Louis and the larger communities. Many have collaborated in facilitating and supporting your visit. We thank you, Holy Father, for coming to us, for the honor you pay our archdiocese, our metropolitan area, our state, our nation. We thank you for raising our hearts to God and for the example you give us of serving one another.
Lord, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is worthy of all praise. Let our prayer be for you. May the lifting up of our hands be as an evening sacrifice acceptable to you, Lord God.
Be gracious and bless us, Lord, and let your face shed its light on us so that we can make you known with reverence and bring forth a harvest of justice. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I read the first sentence in Hebrew, the original language of the prophet. Yesisum midbar v'tziya v'tagel arava v'tifrach b'chavatzaleh The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and blossom. They will blossom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon 
They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will reject with, they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. May the people praise you, Lord. May all the people praise you. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here together in this striking cathedral basilica to worship God and to let our prayer rise up, rise up to him like incense. In singing God's praises, we remember and acknowledge God's dominion over creation and over our lives. Our prayer this evening reminds us that our true mother tongue is the praise of God, the language of heaven a true home. We are gathered on what is already the eve of the new millennium. By any standard, a decisive turning point for the world. As we look at the century, Our century we are leaving behind. We see that human pride and the power of sin have made it difficult for many people to speak their mother tongue. In order to be able to sing God's praise, we must relearn the language of humility and trust the language of moral integrity and of sincere commitment to all that is truly good in the sight of the Lord. Our gracious host, Archbishop Regali, has invited this evening prayer representatives of many different religious groups and sectors of civil society. I greet the Vice President of the United States, of the United States of America, 
and the other civil authorities and community leaders present. I greet my brothers and sisters in the Catholic faith, the members of the laity who want to live their baptismal dignity ever more intensely in their efforts to bring the gospel to bear on the realities of everyday life in society. <coughs> With affection, I greet my brother priests, representing all the many zealous and generous priests of St. Louis and other dioceses. My hope is that you will rejoice each day in your encounter, in prayer, and in the Eucharist with the living Jesus Christ, whose priesthood you share. I happily greet the deacons of the church and encourage you in your liturgical, pastoral, and charitable ministry. A special word of thanks goes to your wives and families for their supportive role in this ministry. The many religious who are here this evening represent thousands and thousands of women and men who have labored in the Archdiocese from the beginning. You are those who follow Christ by imitating his total self-giving to the Father and to the cause of his kingdom. My appreciation and thanks go to each one of you. I address a special word of encouragement to the seminarians. You will be the priests of the new millennium, working with Christ in the new evangelization, helping the church under the action of the Holy Spirit to meet the demands of the, of the new century. I pray each day that the Lord will make you shepherds after his own heart. I am particularly pleased that distinguished members of other churches and ecclesiastical communities have joined the Catholic community of St. Louis in this evening prayer with hope and confidence let us continue to work together to realize the Lord's desire that they may all be one that the world may believe my friendship and esteem goes to those of all our religious traditions. In particular, I recall my long association with members of the Jewish faith. And my meetings in many parts of the world with my Muslim brothers and sisters. Today, divine providence has brought us all together and enabled us to pray. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May this prayer signify our shared commitment to a greater understanding and cooperation. I wish also to say a word of appreciation 
this CV community of the entire metropolitan area, to all those as associated with the city of St. Louis and committed to its human, cultural, and social being. Your determination to meet the many urban challenges facing the community will help bring about a renewed spirit of St. Louis to serve the cause of the city, which is the cause of its people and their needs. Of particular concern must be the training of young people for positive participation in the community. In this regard, I share the Archdiocese's hope that Cardinal Ritter College, sustained by the concerted support of all sectors, will be able to continue to give numerous young people the opportunity for quality education and genuine human advancement. In the Church's name, I express gratitude to everyone, including the business community, for their continuing support of many world charitable, social, and educational services promoted by the Church. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. At the end of this century, and once marked by unprecedented progress, and by tragic toll of human suffering, radical changes in world politics, leave America with a heightened responsibility to be for the world an example of genuinely free, democratic, just, and human society. From salvation history, we learn that power is responsibility. It is service, not privilege. Its exercise is morally justifiable, justifiable when it is used for the good of all, when it is sensitive to the needs of the poor and defenseless. There is another lesson here. God has given us a moral law to guide us and protect us from falling back, back into the slavery of sin and falsehood. We are not alone with our responsibility for the great gift of freedom. The Ten Commandments are the charter of true freedom for individuals as well as for society as a whole. America first proclaimed its independence on the basis of self-evident world truth. America will remain a beacon of freedom for the world as long as it stands by those moral truths which are the very heart of its historical experience. And so, America, if you want peace, work for justice. If you want justice, defend life. If you want life, embrace the truth, the truth revealed by God. In this way, the praise of God, 
the language of heaven will be ever on these people's lips. The Lord is God, the might. Come then, let us bow down and worship him. Amen.
Thrones cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly.
Beloved brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in our God, for He takes great delight in bestowing benefits of His people. Let us fervently pray. gather them as one family in yourself. Fill the hearts of all men with the fire of your love and the desire to ensure justice for all their brothers and sisters. By sharing the good things you give us, may we secure justice and equality for every human being, an end to all division, and a human society built on love and peace. 
We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Most esteemed Enimus, on behalf of the St. Louis Clergy Coalition and the Interfaith Partnership of Metropolitan St. Louis, we, Dr. John F. Anderson, Rabbi Mark Shook, and I fuse our voices with those of so many others to welcome you to St. Louis, Missouri. We are honored by your historic visit. Your visit has created an atmosphere for people of all persuasions to reflect upon their own personal faith. Your visit also comes at a time when the St. Louis region has embarked upon a most ambitious revitalization effort. The year 2004 marks the 200th anniversary of the Louisiana Purchase and the spirit of exploration which the Gateway Arch symbolizes. It is in this spirit that we, the Interfaith Partnership, and the Clergy Coalition formed the Bridges Concept, the Unity Rally, and now your coming has inspired us to create a new and exciting program called Faith Beyond Walls. This initiative is designed to focus the effort of people of faith toward improving health and quality of life in our region. Pope. Your Holiness, your historic visit to St. Louis, Missouri has served as a catalyst in the creation of this program and it transforms your presence into a lasting legacy for our region. Today, we present to you this proclamation announcing the creation of Faith Beyond Walls. Your commitment to improving interfaith relations has fostered an environment wherein the spirit of collective faith, positively action can thrive. In addition, we also present you with this banner, the emblem of faith beyond walls. We hope and pray that it will inspire interfaith communities around the world to focus their efforts on improving health and the quality of life for all humanity. Again, we welcome you to our region.
That's my visit to the to St. Louis comes to an end. I wish to express my appreciation to Vice President and Mrs. Gore for greeting me before my departure for Rome. I thank those associated with the federal government for all that they have done to make this visit possible. My gratitude goes to the governor of the state of Missouri and to the major of the city of St. Louis and to all the members of their staffs. I thank the police and all those who have done so much for security and public order. I thank the civic and the business communities of St. Louis for the support they have given. The welcome extended to me by my fellow Christians and by the members of other religious communities has been most gracious. I hope you will accept my sincere thanks and the assurance of my friendship in the cause of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue and cooperation. It has been a moving experience to visit the people of St. Louis. I would have wished to meet personally each one of the young people at the Kiel Center and all the many other people at the Transworld Dome and here in the Basilica, Cathedral Basilica as well as along the routes and at the airport. A word of thanks goes to the cardinals and my brother bishops of the United States who have come to St. Louis. It was a pleasure to know that so many other dioceses sent representatives. I'm grateful to all, to you to all. In particular, I wish to say thanks to the local church of St. Louis. I am indebted to all the many dedicated people, organizers, committee members and volunteers who have labored long and hard behind the scenes. Nor do I forget the hidden but effective support of all who prayed for the spiritual outcome of this event, especially the contemplatives in their monasteries. A special word of thanks and appreciation is due to Archbishop Rigali, who just two days ago celebrated his fifth anniversary as your dedicated pastor. A few months ago, a pilgrimage from St. Louis came to Rome. We met on the, on the steps of St. Peter's, where they sang to me 
meet me in St. Louis. With God's help, we have done it. <laughs> I will always remember St. Louis. I will remember all of you. God bless St. Louis. God bless America. just offered to me for the archdiocese a very symbolic gift it is the gift of a chalice that remains as a symbol of his visit to st louis and of our union with him in the eucharist we are very grateful to his holiness The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.
Yeah. From our offices too, Holy Father. 